one of the great things about being in this gallery is I get to have a show, a solo show, once a year. But I didn't have a solo show last year. I decided to take a break. And so in the last year and a half, I've been doing this body of work. And it took me a while to figure out, okay, now what am I gonna do? And I thought, well, I'll just wait and see what happens, which is something that usually doesn't happen to me. I usually know exactly what I'm gonna do next. But this time I thought, it'll come, just be patient. So I became get, getting impatient, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> The, the form of the circle came into my brain, and I thought, okay, circles. And then I thought, okay, big deal. Now what are you gonna do? And then I, I said, I started get, getting a bunch, big circles, and then I started getting these little uh, paintings on canvas of color. And they were sort of circular colors, and I thought, well, you know, that's been done, you know? There's other artists that have done that. And I thought, well, just be patient, it will come. And then I thought, well, you know, I do have 16,000 photographs. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe there's something in there I could use. And so I had to narrow that down, and I thought, well, the elements. So basically, the underlying structure of this show is earth, air, fire, and water. So um, it's not literal, and sometimes it is literal. But what I've done here is, um, I first had to learn how to make hoops. I had to learn how to make these hoops, and we have a, a wonderful um, person in our gallery named Nick Dong, and I went to his studio, and he showed me this little machine where you feed this 316 gauge stainless steel into it, and you turn this crank like this, and the, the metal starts coming up over like that. And then he did the welding, because I, I can't do the welding, I took that, but that's too scary for me at this point in my life. I did the grinding, which was really scary. <laughs> so what I did was, I, um, I'll just start over here in this one. Um, this is a piece uh, called Bridge, and it's actually on uh, this stuff called Milky Acetate. And on one side, it's a, it's a matte surface, and the other side is shiny. So I knew if I hung it, if I hung it in, um, then it would spin and you'd be able to see it. So I did some pencil work on this side, a colored pencil. This one I did the same thing, but you can't really tell. I just tried to make the dark, the darker darker and the lighter lighter. And this is called Pacific. This piece here is Egret. It's uh, a drawing. A total drawing. So that's colored pencil. This one was done uh, a printed digital inkjet print and it's been painted. So um, it's got uh, acrylic paint on it. This is the, actually the first piece of the series. It's called Windbreak. It's a drawing on the stuff called Duralar, which is used by architects and it's pretty. Uh, thick, and um, then I painted an uh, incandescent paint on the back, and you can see it when it flashes. Mm -hmm. And it's a windbreak in New Zealand when I was doing a residency there, and I always wanted to use this image, and I finally figured out how to do it. And so that was the turn in space. And when, it, when I did that, um, I realized that over 40 years ago, I was doing large wind sculptures that were kinetic, <coughs> that were 12 feet high, they're circular, and they move in the wind. So I realized what happened was that I've come all the way around and I'm doing something I did over 40 years ago, which is, for some reason, just totally satisfying. <laughs> but it just, I don't know, warms the cockles of my heart. Anyway, and this is my new book, which I'll talk about in a minute. This is, again, a black and white print that's been hand-colored. This piece is called Three Clouds, and it's on that milky acetate stuff. And then it's got a 
got the reverse image here and um, in the um, shiny surface. This piece is a drawing called Moon Pond, and it's the largest one. It's 30 inch. It's a 30 inch hoop, and that was the second piece I did in the series. Then um, we come to water sequence, which are photographs of water. I take photographs in series. I take photographs of fire, water, chandeliers, staircases. You know, I've got all these huge um, groups of images that I've taken over the last almost 20 years. And so this is, I have a fascination with water. Um, because it changes every nanosecond, it's different. And I, I just love that about it, that it's so different. And that, you know, you look at it and it's continuously moving. I love the kinetic nature of it. So then, on this wall, we have pieces that represent the fire element. And um, I chose these to go together because of the dark background. This is a campfire in Michigan where I grew up. And this is a, a torch um, in Varanasi on the Ganges River. If you look really carefully, you can see a hand holding a torch. And that was um, flaming up into the black sky. They do that ceremony every night on the Ganges. And then the, again, we're talking about water here. This one's called H2O. <laughs> and that's uh, an image of a, in uh, Minnesota, a falls that goes into the uh, Minnesota Lake. And then I cannot remember where I did that one in the middle. But the one at the top is at the Berkeley Marina. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> And these are uh, called light, um, light series. Light play, I think. Light play, thank you, Peter. <laughs> they had working titles and then they had to get renamed. Uh, light play, and, and um, does anyone, can anyone figure out what that is? What, what for where? Ships light on the, on the water. Water, water, yeah, right. Well, they're just lights up in the Grand Canal in Venice. This is from a, a, a house, one of those houses right on the canal. These two came from um, also a house. And this one actually is from uh, up in Calistoga, near one of those uh, funky uh, <laughs> pools at night. Um, and then this one is from Maui. And again, it was a, a black and white image that was printed onto paper. And um, it was, it's been hand colored with colored pencil. So uh, one of my pleasures in life is to layer and sit there and layer color and layer it and layer it and start to get the nuances and look back at the photographs as a reference and keep layering and layering and layering. And I just, that's, it's a real meditation. And then this piece is from San Francisco from the Zen Garden in San Francisco. It's a straight photograph. I didn't do a thing with it, which is difficult for me <laughs> because I like to get in there and you know, do stuff, but I have to look at the things and say, okay, it's finished. <laughs> Hands off. And so, anyway, um, what about the pieces in the middle? Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Susan. Um, these pieces are also from Berkeley. Um, they are actually near Indian Rock, and Indian Rock is a big rock where people climb and, and look at the sunset. And if you go across the street and up into another little park, you'll find these gigantic boulders, I mean, you know, as, as tall as this room. And in them were these grinding holes about that big. So they were used by the Pomo Indians to grind grain. And it was January and it had just rained. And so the reflection is in the pool of water. And when I'm photographing, I'm actually wanting to do three things. I'm 
looking for reflection, abstraction, and shadow. So that's uh, a good example of my re of reflection and abstraction. So that's the third piece, or the last piece. And then this is a book that um, our friend David Littlejohn has collected some of my work. I asked him one night, would you mind writing a little bit of, you know, a couple of paragraphs about my work? Well, he wrote 10,000 words. <laughs> and we said, oh my goodness, this is a book. And so it goes from the early 70s, 1971, and it goes through all the different things. I was a sculptor for 25 years, and then I was been doing these mixed media works on paper for about 20 years. And so it's, uh, it's really great. I'm just thrilled to have this, this and it's dedicated to David. There's a picture of David in the back, and me showing him one of my, <laughs> through a, a, a cloudy door, it's not so easy to see, but he was a real fine person, and uh, Professor Emeritus at, at uh, Berkeley, and a journalist in the department. So anyway, does anyone have any questions? I only have a comment because finally I realized what the circuits are about. Oh, <laughs> I mean, besides, you know, taking a full circle, going back into your history, but right. they're also portals into your private world. Oh. Is that what you're observing while you're traveling and nice. far away and close by? So it's, uh, it's collecting that information we, we have around us constantly, but right. we normally pass right. by. But if you know, you take so look, you see right. all kinds of little things, ideas, thoughts, expressions. Right. And exactly. it's, it's really wonderful. It's like, you know, the portal or the microscope, petri dish. So it has all these other elements in it. Because it is an unusual shape, as you mentioned yes. before, and to, you know, to bring that into the, yeah, to, to present your work like that. It's, you have to adjust a little bit. I had to adjust a little bit. So it it's good order. Yeah. <laughs> And also, here's um, in this chapter, California and after. Um, I before I came to California, I had the um, actually I would say the honor of spending some time on the Rosebud Reservation in South Dakota. And I went there with um, my husband, who was uh, Broad Brothers with Leonard Crowdall and the American Indian Movement. And um, I, we went to videotape the Sundance ceremony. And then we were there two summers in a row. And then I, I left and I, came, I stayed here. And then I started having these circles appear in my work at that time, in 1972, three, four, five. And I kept thinking, where are all these circles from? And then I remembered the Sundance circle, the teepee, the drum, the sweat lodge, all those are circles. And they had gone into my subconscious and come out, and it took me a while to figure out where they came from. But that's where they came from. <laughs> so anyway, that's that um, explanation about circles. Anybody else have a question? the different yes. framework on these. Right. Yes. Um, the other shape that I really like is ellipse, in the elliptical form. And um, that was actually done by a company. It took me about six months to find somebody who would make those frames for me in Richmond. Um, and they cut them out uh, with, uh, with a laser. And I didn't know how to do that. I, so I had to ask someone else to do it. So that's, I use the, um, the elliptical form there, and two of them in, in this piece, the water sequence. But the flat, the framing is and flat. That, it, yes, it's flat. It's stainless steel. Uh -huh. okay. It's stainless. Right. And all, and all the other things, there's a few brass groups, and the rest are stainless. These actually are painted. It took me six swipes and I said, okay, that's wrong with that. <laughs> I think I'll sand them instead. <laughs> okay.
Great. Any other questions? Curtis, I have yes. a question about the two in the middle here. Did you yes. do any more of your yes. uh, yes. tuning of the photographs? Yes. These are these were printed black and white. Uh -huh. And I spent hours and hours mm -hmm. and hours laying the color in there. Yeah. It, it took it took a long time. This one not so much, but this one. Mm -hmm. This one took so long. Of course, it, it doesn't bother me that much because that's what I really like to do. But you know, right? Right. You could have had them. You could have had them printed in color, but that I would have. I could have printed them in color. That is. <laughs> but that, yeah. So I have the, the original photograph that I'm referring to, and I changed it a little bit. But that's that's what I basically do is I, I lay in the color that I see in the photograph, or I wouldn't have taken the photograph in the first place if it didn't really catch my eye. So, and you do this from one side, not the other. Just one side, yeah. And I knew because of this milky acetate stuff that it would be black and white on the other. And so yeah. I thought that was kind of an interesting thing to have them change and turn and be yes. hit one different, sometimes the same, sometimes different. Yeah, and same with all these. And also yeah. um, the windbreak and the three clouds. The shadows, to me, are very much part of the work. Oh, yes. Yeah. At night, you can really see the shadows. His face. A whole bunch. Big space. Oh. Yeah. It's interesting. I was watching the shadow on the telephone and the, the drawing the right the egress, yeah. from the window oh, as it came oh, across the nice. yeah. image. Mm -hmm. It was nice. It made a different way you could see in the image. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much for coming, everybody. Thank <laughs> you.